prop turn snack. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about Max Keeble's Big Move. Max Keeble's Big Move is a 2001 theatrical release directed by Tim Hill, cinematography by Arthur Albert, editing by Tony Lombardo and Peck Pryor, music by Michael Wandmaker or Wandmacher, and it's written by Jonathan Bernstein, Mark Blackwell, and James Greer. Tim Hill is best known for SpongeBob SquarePants, the series, and the films. Welcome Freshman and Alvin and the Chipmunks. Arthur Albert is best known for Beverly Hills Ninja, Happy Gilmore, Saving Silverman, and Dirty Work. Tony Lombardo is best known for The Long Goodbye, Uncle Buck, My Cousin Vinny, and Popeye. Peck Pryor is best known for The Blues Brothers, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Conan the Barbarian, and Disaster Movie. Michael Wandmaker is best known for Underworld Blood Wars, my Bloody Valentine, Bloodborne, and Voice from the Stone. Jonathan Bernstein and James Greer are writing team best known for Just My Luck, Larry the Cable Guy, Health Inspector, Unsane, and The Spy Next Door. Mark Blackwell is just known for Just My Luck, Oedipal Eats, The Jackie Mason Show, and this. The film stars Alex D. Linz, Zena Gray, Josh Peck, Larry Miller, Noel Fisher, Jamie Kennedy, and Orlando Brown. Alex D. Linz plays Max, and Larry Miller plays Principal Jindrake, and I've covered both of them in previous videos. They'll be listed in the link to the description. Zena Gray plays Megan and is best known for Snow Day, In Good Company, The Shaggy Dog, and My Soul to Take. Josh Peck plays Rove and is best known for Mean Creek, Drake and Josh, The Wackness, and Red Dawn. Noel Fisher plays Troy and is best known for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Twilight Breaking Dawn, and Shameless. Jamie Kennedy plays the evil ice cream man and is best known for Malibu's Most Wanted, Scream 2, Son of the Mask, and Romeo and Juliet. Orlando Brown plays Dobbs and is best known for Major Pain, 13, Safe Harbor, and That's So Raven. The film has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes and made $18.8 million at the box office off of a $25 million budget, which is not good. However, <laughs> I love this movie. Um, this was another one when I was a kid that I would frequently rewatch. Definitely not as much as like Lion King 2 and Little Mermaid and um, you know, Winnie the Pooh and stuff like that. But oh my God, I loved this movie. I thought this movie was so fun. I had a huge crush on Alex when I was a kid. I would watch this and Home Alone 3. Like those were his two big ones for me. I would watch them all the time because you know, even though he was definitely older than me because he's like, 12, 13 at the time that this movie is coming out. I was like eight, but he was so tiny that like I thought he might have been similar to my age. So I thought he was so handsome and I had a big fat crush on him. So I loved Max Keeble. And I have said like since this movie, I have said, see you bassoon. Like I always say, see you bassoon. And my favorite story about that is I would, I say see you bassoon to my dad. And he thought it was just something I said. And it wasn't until like last year that I told him it was from a movie. And he was like, what? <laughs> like he had no idea I was quoting a movie technically. And he was like, I love it. We have to watch this movie. We still have to watch it. We have not watched it together. But um, I love that story so much because he was like so thrilled that it was from a movie. He thought I just like said see you bassoon, but he's like, it makes it so much better that you got it from like some movie when you were a kid. And I was like, okay. So I always say that. So that means like a lot to me for some reason, even though it's like so dumb, but I love it. See you bassoon. Like, I think it's so cute. This movie is like iconic for like that age group at that time. Like it has everything in it. The music is so early 2000s. Like it's literally got Baby One More Time by Britney, like the iconic bam bam now a few times throughout the movie because of Jenna. And it's like so hilarious to me because they definitely paid Boku Bucks. They paid Boku Bucks for just that like 15 seconds of the song that they use because it's so iconic. But like, I love that they use that. And then the Tony Hawk cameo, the Lil Romeo cameo. <laughs> Yeah. Like the Tony Hawk cameo is very like, okay, yeah. I mean like even now a Tony Hawk cameo would be cool because like he's still cool. It's Tony Hawk. Like he's a dope skateboarder. Like that's cool. But like then he was Tony, like his games were at their peak. Like he was Tony freaking Hawk. So to have him like appear in a dream right at the beginning was hilarious. And then just Lil Romeo being in the movie, like Lil Romeo was such a big deal to like <laughs> people my age for like, literally for like two seconds, I feel like, because it was like, 
there were a couple songs by Little Romeo, especially like from this movie, and then like never heard of again. <laughs> I haven't heard of Little Romeo since. But oh my god. And then there is one random kid that says something to Max, I believe it is. And it's Gordo from Lizzie McGuire, which Lizzie McGuire has been airing. So like he got this part as like a little addition to what he was doing on the Disney Channel. And I thought that was crazy to see him as like some random side day player. They call it a bit player. Someone who has like a random line, just like maybe one. Um, so that was super exciting. And then just to see like everybody as babies is crazy. Noel Fisher, like, um, I know he's in Shameless and I've never personally seen Shameless. I've seen clips and stuff. But like every time I see him in anything, I'm like, it's Troy McGinty. <laughs> like I just know him as Troy McGinty. And then Orlando Brown, obviously I know him better as his character in that, so Raven. But it's also so funny to see him so young in this. And then Jamie Kennedy, I know I know, and I can't place him. I feel like he's in some other kid show. Um, but this movie, and then obviously Lizzie McGuire's dad is in this movie, but he's not like a major star, so I didn't count him. And then obviously Josh Peck, and I'm pretty sure Josh Peck did this before he was on Drake and Josh. It might have been even before the Amanda show. So it's crazy that he was in a Disney movie before he did some Nickelodeon stuff, I feel like, which is so nuts to me. Um, the garbage makeup is so good. The cinematography's fun. The soundtrack to this film, I think, is one of the most outstanding parts of it. I think, like, outstanding by, like, it stands out from everything, not, like, outstanding. Even though it is a good soundtrack, by all means. But, you know, just the, the, the little Romeo song, the jump and slide. <laughs> like, that's why it's so good. And I don't know. The soundtrack's very fun. And this movie itself, I think, is genuinely funny. I know it's, like, really stupid in some parts, but, like... Just this entire concept is hilarious. And then like Larry Miller <laughs> as Principal Gendrake. Like the acting in this movie is by far also one of the more outstanding parts of it because this movie would not be as good as it is if Larry Miller wasn't as committed as he is to Principal Gendrake. Like everyone is so committed to their parts and that's what I love so much. Like. I think it's just genuinely fun. So anyway, the garbage makeup was really excellent. Anytime the kids got thrown in the garbage, it really looked disgusting and like it looked really believable. And then um, same with like the food fight along the same lines. Um, so I thought all of that was really good. Fart knocker? <laughs> when the girl throws the ice cream at the truck and she says fart knocker. Like I've just never heard that. I've never heard someone say those two words together as an insult and it makes me laugh every single time because I always forget that that's what she says. Like I remember the part and I don't forget the part, but just like to hear her be like, fart knocker, like it kills me and it's stupid, it's so dumb. But like, that's not an insult you hear every day. You hear butthead, you hear jerk, you hear worse names that are more like adult insults, but you don't hear fart knocker. Like that's so stupid, but it's so funny. My entire childhood, I thought Orlando Bloom's character Dobbs was saying marching call. I thought he was going marching call. And then I realized, I think he's saying margin call because it's like the stocks and stuff and the margins of stocks. And I was like, oh my God, I think he's saying margin call. Margin call, which makes so much more sense than marching call from when I was a kid, but I didn't know what margins were on the stock market and stuff like that. Cease is so iconic. Like Mariah and I kind of use that throughout our normal lives. Like random things will be happening and we'll just be like, cease. <laughs> like it's just so stupid. And then what made me laugh kind of a lot in this one is such a random line, but um, the principal, Principal Jim Drake says something about like, that's not, it's I excourage it <laughs> instead of like discourage it. He says excourage it. And later <coughs> in the movie, Max is doing a voiceover and he says, that wasn't courage, that was ex-courage. <laughs> it destroyed me. I thought it was so funny to bring that back like kind of in a more like make sense way. So that really killed me. Overall, like I get it. The movie's not like of a lot of substance. I get why people are saying it's got a 29%. I get why it probably did bad. I get that some parents might have not wanted their kids to see this because like a majority of the film is a kid misbehaving and I totally understand that and see that argument 
But at the end of the day, I think this movie's funny and the lesson at the end is like, we shouldn't be as bad as the bullies. Um, we should be better than them. And like, that's kind of it all. And taking responsibility for your actions is a huge like lesson and part of it. And um, facing, you know, the consequences and all that kind of stuff is like all the like lessons you learn by the end of it. Um, so I think it's teaching good lessons, but I get like the glamorization of like breaking school rules and um, playing pranks and like all that kind of stuff. But no matter what, like this movie, like I just said this movie's iconic. Like from this age, it's iconic. Like from 2001, when I was like eight, I was eight in September of 2001. So seven, eight years old, this movie was like, it was iconic. And it was like with the Britney music and the soundtrack and just the, the like him trying to be cool and Tony Hawk and Lil Romeo and like, just like him, Max, like standing up to all these bullies. Like it was just, it was an iconic movie. And like, I, I still quote it. I say cease and the by far and away the most is I'll see you bassoon. I say see you bassoon all the time. So I genuinely very much love this movie. So it's definitely gonna have a higher rating than it probably, technically speaking, should. But I think it's a well-made film. I think it's pretty, a pretty like well thought out plot. Like nothing is, to me, there's nothing in this movie that is like super unnecessary story-wise, except like maybe Megan having a crush on Max, but like, welcome to the early 2000s. Um, but otherwise, like, the plot, like, it all feeds itself, um, and it's quick. It's a quick movie. It went by really fast, and, um, another thing about this is it never, like, it always sucks me in to the point, like, that I don't notice technical things, which, as I always say, is the best thing a movie can do. Like, if I'm not noticing technical things, that means the movie's doing a really good job of just like keeping me entertained and into the story. And I've seen this movie a million times. I own it. Like, and the fact that I watched it yesterday, and I definitely watched it. I think I've watched it this year. So like the fact that I watched it yesterday and there were a couple moments where I was like, oh man, I like, I have to be paying attention to like the cinematography and like all the music and stuff like that. And I was like, ooh, I, bet, I hope I have been. Um, it's crazy. So anyway, okay, I digress, I digress. My final rating is eight. Uh, dumpsters out of 10. Our total movie count is <laughs> Parent Death Toll and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with Movie and Watching When, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, you'll find out Movie and Watching When. I put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, join Patreon. Um, I think, oh, it's January. So tiers should have different prices. So go check out the different prices of the tiers and everything because uh, I revamped all of that. Um, so tears are cheaper. Just so everybody, if you're wondering, tears are cheaper. They're not more expensive. They're cheaper. So go check them out. Um, buy merch. I'm not wearing merch. I'm wearing a very comfortable and normal Disney shirt. Um, but all merch is down below or linked up here. Um, so go check out merch. Merch is sick. I love merch. I should maybe come up with a new design for this year. We'll have to see. Um, until next time, come on, subscribe and I'm going to try to relife you are so you do and don't be Principal Jen Drake about it. Jump and slide. <laughs> wow. What an iconic movie, guys. <laughs>